Some swear the testimony about to give this matter be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes. You may be seated. Could you please state your name, spelling your last name for the record? Kyle Rittenhouse, R I T T E N H O U S C. Kyle, where do you reside? Walworth County. How old are you? 18. On August 25th of 2020, did you come to downtown Kenosha to look for trouble? No. Would you have shot Joseph Rosenbaum if he hadn't chased you trying to take your firearm? Objection, leading. I guess I'm kind of leading. Would you, I'll get to it. Are you a high school graduate? Yes. What high school? Penn Foster Online High School. Are you currently enrolled in any further studies? I'm a college student studying nursing at Arizona State University. Do you, who do you currently live with? My mom and two sisters. Directing your attention to August 25th of 2020, where did you reside? Antioch, Illinois. Do you remember the address? 286 Anita Terrace, apartment 104, Antioch, Illinois. And who did you live with there? My mother and two sisters. What's your father's name? Michael Rittenhouse. Back on August 25th of 2020, where did he reside? He lived in Kenosha, in, in the city of Kenosha, behind, in the apartments behind the pick and save on 50th, on 50. Do you have any other family that's from Kenosha? Yes. What? My grandmother, my aunt, my uncle and cousins all live in the city of Kenosha. Okay. There's been testimony in this trial about the firearm in question, which has been marked. No, I don't know. States 28. You've seen that gun? Yes. Before August 25th of 2020, had that gun ever left? left the state of Wisconsin? No. Now, before this event happened on August 25th of 2020, did you have any hobbies? Yes. Tell the jury what you like to do. I was a swimmer. Um, I enjoyed working. I was a lifeguard, um, hanging out with friends, going to the beach, just normal teenage stuff. Were you a, were you a member of any groups organized Groups? Yes. What? I was a police explorer for Grays Lake Police Department and I was a firefighter EMT cadet for Antioch Fire Department. Did you have any training in um, life saving, anything like that? Yes. What? I was a certified lifeguard. I was a certified, I, I am a certified lifeguard and swim instructor. I am certified in Stop the Bleed, CPR, AED, Automatic External Defibrillator, um, and Basic Life Support. Okay. On August 25th of 2020, where were you employed? I was, empl I was furloughed at the YMCA in Lindenhurst, Illinois because of the COVID-19 pandemic, and I was working at the RecPlex in Pleasant Prairie. Okay. Rockplex here at Kenosha County? Yes. Now, on the night of the 24th, did you come to downtown Kenosha? Not downtown, but I came to Kenosha for work. Okay, and after your, your shift at work completed, where did you go? I went to Dominic Black's stepfather's house. Um, I believe his name is Scott Dickhart. It's been a while since I've seen him. Okay, and who is Dominic Black in relationship to you? Uh, that um, him and my Dominic Black and my sister Mackenzie Rittenhouse used to date. Okay. And on the night of the 24th, were you aware of anything going on in Kenosha? I, I knew there was uh, protests, demonstrations, and riots going on in the later evening. Okay. And how were you aware of that? I saw videos on social media, um, on Facebook live streams, TikTok of... Um, I, I saw the car source lot being burned down, the car source one, what we've been referring to. Um, I saw a police officer get assaulted. He had a brick thrown at his head. Um, and I saw the mattress store owner get knocked out, and I believe his jaw was broken and it had to be wired shut or something. And, and you saw all of that on the 24th? Yes. Did you go to downtown Kenosha at that time and try and do anything about that? No, I did not. 
directing your attention to the late morning of August 25th, 2020. Did you have occasion to go downtown? I, I did go to downtown in the morning of August 25th. Who did you go there with? I went there with Dominic Black, my sister Mackenzie Rittenhouse, and Ray Dickhart. And describe what you did. Uh, we walked around for a little bit, and then I believe at around 11.30 noon, we ended up at Ruther Central High School, where we ended up cleaning graffiti for about, I want to say, an hour and a half to two hours. Showing what's been previously marked as Exhibit 131. Do you recognize that? I do. Could you describe what you see in that photo? Um, towards the left in the olive green shirt, that's me. And then to my left, that's Ray Dickard. And to my right, that's my sister Mackenzie Rittenhouse. And what are you doing there? We're cleaning graffiti off of Ruther Central High School. And were you getting paid to do this? No, I was not. And you see what the graffiti says? Yes. And you do what it said as you were cleaning it off? Yes. I won't repeat it. After you were done doing that, what did you do? Uh, we, we were walking and we, were, we went to the car source lot, the first location, and um, we, we were looking at the destruction of the burnt cars and we, we saw the owner, Sam and Sal, I believe that's what they told us their names were. And you saw, when we say car source, the one that you met Sam and Sal at is what we've been referring to as car source number one? Yes. And that's the one that they just played a video of all the burnt out cars? Yes. Did you have any discussions with Sam and Sal? Uh, briefly, um, I offered my condolences and I said if there's anything I can do, please reach out to me. He gave me his number, um, I gave him my number. and, and You were with Dominic Black at that time? I was. And your sister? Yes. And what did you do after that? Um, after that, we walked back to, I believe, we parked their car by, you see the parking lot? Do you have the pointer up there? Yes. We parked our car right in this parking lot in that corner, you're, somewhere over there. You're referring to the parking lot, which is uh, at the corner, 59th and Sheridan. It would be the southeast corner, correct? Correct. And you have you, you're pointing the dot. You parked closer to Eighth Street, correct? Yes. Okay, you can put the pointer down. And whose car did you get there in? Dominic Blacks. And when you left, where did you go? Once we left that parking lot, we went to Dominic Black's stepfather's house again, and we hung out there for a little bit. Okay. And do you know who um, Nick Smith is? I do. And did you have any contact with Nick Smith that afternoon? Later in the evening, around 3, 30, 4 o'clock, uh, Nick Smith called me and Dominic. And when he called you, what was the nature of the call? At first, Nick Smith wanted us to drive him to Chicago by – not Chicago, by O'Hare Airport, the sub suburbs of Chicago, because he wanted to buy a, buy a bulletproof vest. And we said, Dominic said, okay, we'll drive him. And then he said, okay, I need you to pick us up, me up at like 3.30, 4 o'clock. Okay. Did you go and pick him up eventually? Yes. Uh, we actually, before we picked him up, we went to Jelensky's. Okay. What did you do at Jelensky's? We bought, um, Dominic wanted me to buy uh, two rifle slings. And did you? I did. One was for what? One was for my rifle and the other one was for Dominic's rifle. Okay. And why did you care about your rifles that evening? Um, the reason for the slings were just so, it's like a, a, ret a retainer, so if I'm helping somebody with first aid, I can just like dangle my rifle behind me and I don't have to worry about somebody just randomly going and picking it up off the ground just as like an extra measure so it won't be taken from the ground. And what time did you go to Jelensky's? I want to say about 2.30 but I don't know exactly for sure. Okay. 
when did you first have contact with Nick Smith? Uh, oh, 330, three, eh, 315. Okay. Three fifteen, three thirty. And 30. was there any discussion regarding car source at that time? Yes. What? Um, Nick Smith. Once we picked him up, we drove. He wanted to go to a bank to withdraw money. The bank was closed, and then he was like, "Hey, would you guys like to come with me and help watch over the car source, make sure there's no fires or anything?" And Dominic said, "Yes, I I agreed." I said, "Okay." And then I said, here, Nick, I don't, I don't really need my bulletproof vest. I'm going to be helping people with first aid. So I gave him my bulletproof vest. And by you giving him your bulletproof vest, did that stop the need to go to someplace by O'Hare Airport? Yes. Okay. And why does a 17-year-old kid have a bulletproof vest? It was issued to me by the Grays Lake Police Department. Okay. You didn't purchase it? No, I did not. And after you gave him your bulletproof vest, where did you go? Uh, we went back to uh, Nick Smith's house where we parked Dominic Black's car. And then what did you do? We walked from Mr. Smith's house. Um, once we parked at Nick Smith's house, we walked from Nick Smith's house to the car source one cutting through the Ruther Central backside parking lot because Nick Smith lives on the same street of... You don't have to say where Nick Smith okay. lives. Okay. He, he lives within walking distance from here? Yes. Okay. And so you go to Car Source 1? Yes. And that's the Burnt Belt one? N uh, no, Car Source 2, my bad, across the street. Okay. And at Car Source 2, that's where you spent most of the evening? Yes. Okay. When you first got to Car Source 2, the one at 59th and Sheridan, what happened? Um, the owners were there, Sam, Sal, and his father, and I believe, I, I think it was his uncle there also. He was driving a, a van of some sort. Okay. And what, what was the discussion? Sam and Sal thanked us for coming out to help. Um, and then he said, Sal said, hey, why don't you guys hop in my car? I, if I remember correctly, it was either a white or black BMW or Mercedes. I don't I don't recall exactly. And why did he want you to get in his car? Um, he was gonna drive us down to car source lot number three. Okay, and did you agree to get in his car? I did. And who went to car source number three? Me, Dominic Black, and Nick Smith. And who was driving? Sal. And when you got there, what happened? We got out and um, we hung around for a couple minutes and then some people showed up. Um, I now know who they are, but at the time I didn't. Okay. Can I have <laughs> Show you what's been marked as exhibit 330. Do you recognize that exhibit? I do. And can you? Your Honor, can I? Can you go up there, please, and point out? Can you point out the people who you knew before that picture was taken and name them? Yes. This yeah. is. This is Sal, the owner. This is Ryan Balch. This is Joanne Fiedler. This is Justin Hamilton. This is Dustin Colette. This is Nicholas Smith. I don't recall his name. This is me. And this is Dominic Black. Okay. We've heard testimony. You can have a seat. We've heard testimony about you, Nick, and Dominic. You knew those individuals before August 25th of 2020? I knew Nicholas Smith and Dominic Black. Okay. You did not know the owner of Car Source previously? I did not. Was he being nice to you guys? Was he happy you were there? Was he mad at you for being there? Describe it. He was happy we were there. Okay. And 
you heard his, their testimony, the two owners, I believe that was Friday afternoon? I did. And did they give you permission to be there? They did. And the other individuals in this photograph, some of whom have testified in this trial, 10 minutes before this photograph was taken, did you know any of them? I did not. Had you ever spoken to any of them? No. And when you were there, what was the idea? Was there a plan? What was going to happen? Uh, yes. The plan was to, I, I went down there to provide first aid. I also, I, I brought my um, orange first aid kit, the fanny pack. And I also brought my Pelican box, which, had, which was filled with first aid stuff by my feet to provide first aid. The orange box by your feet you refer to as a Pelican box? Yes. Did you have that before the 25th? Yes. Was it stock? Yes. With things that you had bought and brought? Yes. And do you go with that every day or is that because of the situation? It was in the trunk of my car. Okay. And the fanny pack, what's the situation with that? It was my work bag. Um, I brought it to work with me and I would put it under my lifeguard booth. Okay. And that had first aid supplies? Yes. Now, after the meeting here at 63rd and Sheridan Road, what's been referred to as Car Source 3, what happened? Um, after the photograph, um, I believe, I, I don't recall exactly, but there was about two or three vans that pulled up, like big vans with people inside of them. Okay, and what was their role in this evening? Well, they showed up and they wanted to protect the business and I didn't really have a say in what everybody was doing. I was just there doing my first aid stuff and then Ryan Ball said, hey, why don't you guys stay here um, and we'll go down to the car source number two. Okay, and so the people, a group of people was gonna stay at car source three and the people depicted in this photograph were gonna go where? Car source two. And is that what happened? Yes. And so at that point then, Sam and Sal had coverage, for lack of a better word, at both of their businesses to protect the property, correct? Yes. So you get down to Car Source 2, did all of these people go there? Yes, besides Sal, the owner, he did not. Okay. During the night, was Sam and Sal there? They were not. They left you guys there? Yes. Are I. I believe Nick Smith was in contact with them throughout the night. I'm not certain, but I believe they were. And you get down there, were you able to get in and out of the business? Yes. How? Uh, Sal, the owner, actually gave Nick Smith a set of keys. Did you personally see that? I did. Did he give you any other direction regarding any equipment or anything like that? He let us know where like the power washers and the fire, I think there was a single fire extinguisher in the building and some hoses, uh, the hose hookups, just in case there was any fires we needed to put out at the lot. Anything else about uh, the roof? He showed the, I believe it was Dominic Black and Nick Smith, the two ladders that were there to get up on the roof. Okay, and did you guys use those ladders? I didn't personally, but the people that were on the roof did. Okay, and you saw them use those ladders? I didn't see them, but i that's how they got up there. Okay. Did. Where were you predominantly at Car Source 2? I was in front of the Car Source 2. Now, during the night at Car Source 2, did you stay there the whole time? No, not okay. the whole time. When you would leave Car Source 2, what were you doing? When, when I left, I was with Ryan Balch and we would go out and ask if anybody needed any first aid assistance and we would see if there were any fires and we would put them out. Okay. Did you personally put out any fires? I did. Where? I put one out at the church. Um, Can you use a pointer? Um, so right here was where there was the demolishing. They were breaking some stuff down but right here, I believe there was another building with an alleyway. It was either right here or right here. I don't remember um, fully, but there was a fire um, down the alleyway where they were trying to set the building and church on fire and me and Mr. Balch, and I believe somebody else was with us. We went to go put that fire out. Did you put it out? We did. 
then what did you do? Uh, we, s around that time, we saw Ruther Central High School on fire, the front doors, and we were walking north down Sheridan Road to go put the fire out, um, and then somebody else put the fire out before we got to Ruther and Central High School. when you say the front, is that right here on Civic Park? No, sorry, that's my mistake. Um, you're walking north on Sheridan. It's the it's the side of the building on Sheridan Road towards the left when you're walking north. In the general area where you had helped tried to help remove graffiti earlier. Yes, on the in that photo to the right. Okay, and during the evening, was there any friction between your group and protesters slash rioters? Uh, no. Um, the only type of uh, stuff that happened was the person that attacked me first threatened to kill me twice. Okay. And the person who threatened to kill you, we now know was Mr. Rosenbaum, correct? Yes. Before August 25th of 2020, had you ever seen him before? I did not. Had you ever done anything to upset him? No. Now, you said he threatened to kill you twice. Yes. Describe the first time. The first time was me and Ryan Bolt were a little bit north, towards the north corner of 59th and Sheridan, and Mr. Rosenbaum was walking with a steel chain and he had a blue mask around his face, and um, he was just mad about something. Me and me and Mr. Balch were asking people if they needed medical help, and then he screamed, "If sorry for my language, he screamed, if I catch any of you fuckers alone, I'm going to fucking kill you. And that was directed at you and Mr. Balch? It, it, it was directed at both of us, what I believe. And there was a second occasion where he threatened you? Yes. Um, the second time was outside of the car source. Um, and I, I don't think, I don't know if it was directed towards me, but I heard it. He said to, I believe it was Joanne Fiedler, Dustin Colette, and uh, another guy. He's, he was screaming. He said, I'm going to cut your fucking hearts out and kill, I'm not going to repeat the second word, but kill you and word. Now, did you ever see Mr. Rosenbaum doing any physical property there? I did. Where? I saw him with, I, I now know to be Joshua Zeminski. Um, I saw him tip that trailer over I, and the porta potty. I saw him do both. And I believe he tried to start the porta potty on fire. I don't know, I don't think he, I don't think he succeeded. But then I saw him with Mr. Zeminski he was either helping starter or he was like throwing stuff on it. I don't know which one he was doing. Where did you originally see that trailer? That trailer was in the St. James in the St. James Church parking lot. Um, sort of like right over here in like the backish corner what it what I remember. And did you see how it got from there to where it was put on fire? It was pulled by who? Um, it, it was several people that pulled it into the street, and but I can't tell you definitely who pulled it into the street. And you went down there and saw them starting a fire? I, I didn't go down there. I was at the corner of the car source lot. Okay. And you referred to Mr. Zeminski. Before August 25th of 2020, had you ever met Mr. Zeminski? Zeminski. Before August 25th of 2020, had you ever met Mr. Zeminski? I have not. Did you ever meet him since? I have not. Now, when you first saw Mr. Rosenbaum, was his top half of his body clothed or unclothed? He was clothed, clothed with a blue mask the first time I saw him. It, uh, yeah, blue mask. And what was on, what color was his shirt, if you remember? Um, a dark red-ish color. Now, did you provide medical help 
to anyone. I did. Describe a couple of those occasions. Um, the first time I provided medical help to someone was um, this lady. I, I, I think she sprained her ankle or twisted it. I, I don't know exactly. I'm not an expert on x-rays. or I wouldn't know. Um, she hurt her ankle and she was being carried by two gentlemen. And I said, hey, I, before that I was just pepper sprayed, but I was like, hey, do you need help? And she said yes, and I said, okay, let's go into the car source where I was helping people. And I wrapped her ankle, and then she went on her way. And I said, I told her, I let her know there was a hospital. <coughs> if you go, I want to say southbound Sheridan, across the street from car source three, I let her know that the hospital was over there, and she should go get it looked at. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. What? Um. Somebody threw a chemical bomb, actually right right after I heard the, I'm going to cut your hearts out for Mr. Rosenbaum. I don't know who threw it, but somebody threw a chemical bomb, and Ryan Balch had some effects of it, so I helped Mr. Balch with being able to breathe, and I helped flush his eyes out and had him drink some water. Okay. You, um, in... The answer to the question just before, you said something about being pepper sprayed? I did. And where did that happen? That happened at the car source, right, I think, I believe it's the first time a big crowd of people were over there. I was pepper sprayed by somebody that was in the crowd. I don't know why, but I was pepper sprayed. Did you do anything in retaliation? I did not. Now, directing your attention to later in the evening, did there come a, an occasion where you had contact with Mr. McGinnis? There was. And before this evening, August 25th, 2020, did you ever met or spoke to Mr. McGinnis? I have not. And you and Mr. McGinnis and Mr. Balch go someplace? Yes. And describe that. I get done with my interview with Mr. McGinnis and I ask him... I asked Mr. McGinn, no, I don't ask him. I said, if you want to come with us, that's fine, to document and film the me, me and Ryan helping people. And he said, yeah, sure, and he followed behind us. And in that tape for Mr. McGinnis, there's talk about you being an EMT, correct? Yes. Are you an EMT? I am not. You have first aid and other training. As I do. And you go to... South on Sheridan Road? Correct. You cross 60th and Sheridan Road? I believe we stay just to the right uh, going south on Sheridan Road. Okay. And eventually you cross Sheridan Road? Eventually. And were the Bearcats there yet? Uh, no. Yes, they were. Okay. Had they set up a line to stop people that you were aware of? Not that I was aware of. Um, I just know they were parked right there and people were throwing rocks at them. Did anybody tell you not to cross that line? You wouldn't be able to go back? Not until later in the evening. Okay. You cross that line, where do you go? Uh, we continue straight, uh, straight in a southerly direction down Sheridan Road. Okay. Were you going any place in particular? No, we were just going to see if anybody needed medical help. And I, I looked at a guy's shoulder on the way there. Okay, and you finish with the guy's shoulder, and you continue on, and what happens? I continue walking in a south southerly direction down Sheridan Road, and then, and then as I'm walking, um, I believe you guys have been referring to him as Yellow Pants. Um, he said he he called. He said something to me, I believe it was, you were the one that pointed your rifle at me with the laser pointed at me. I, I believe that's what I heard. Um, and I I didn't. I That's the first time I saw him that night. So I was confused. So I said, I did. And then I continued to walk away. And was the did an admission that you did it or more of a statement with a question? It was a sarcastic remark. Okay. 
Did you engage with them any further? No. And from there, where did you go? Um, there I continue walking in a southerly direction, merging towards the middle of Sheridan Road. Okay, at that point, do you become aware of anything? In about a couple, as I'm walking, I start to look because I realize Mr. Balch is not with me anymore. Okay, did you continue on your way down Sheridan Road without Mr. Balch? Um, no, I actually went to go look for um, Mr. Balch in the Ultimate Gas Station parking lot. Okay, when you went to the Ultimate Gas Station parking lot, describe what was going on there. There were a lot of people there. Um, I don't really know what was going on. I was just focused on trying to find Mr. Balch. Um, as I was looking for him, couldn't find him. I said, okay, no problem. I'll just go back to the car source, lot, uh, car source number two. Okay, and describe what happened as you did that. As I did that, I received a phone call from Dominic Black. Hey, let me back up. Were you able to get back to car source number two? No, I did not. Describe that. As I was trying to get back, um, the police stopped me. Well, it didn't stop me. They told me, I believe they said something along the lines of, to not go down there, and I was telling them, hey, I, I, I need to go down there, that's where I'm at, that business, I, I don't remember exactly how that conversation went, but they wouldn't let me go back to car source lot number two. Were, so you weren't able to get back to car source two? I was not. Did you disobey the police's order? No. And you're alone, you're stuck on the other side of the police line from the car source two, where do you go? I go to where there's other people at the gas station protecting the gas station and I, I go there because I believe that's the safest place to go because there's other people there. And, and at that point were you able to find Mr. Bolch? I was not. Well you're at the ultimate gas station I think we've been calling it? Correct. Um, Point it out. Just there's no Right there, the ultimate convenience center, diagonal from the um, golf gas station. Okay. And when you were there, what's the next next significant thing that happened? Dominic Black calls me and he says, Kyle, I need you to get down to the car source lot number three. The cars are being bashed in. They're setting all the cars on fire. I need you to go and put the fires out. Okay. And did you do anything as a result of that phone call? I did. What? At the ultimate gas station, I asked, I, I don't know who he is, but I asked an individual if he could come with me and if I could have a fire extinguisher to put out the fires. Were both of those requests satisfied? One of them were. What? I was given a fire extinguisher, but he he said he can't come with me, um, and he said he believes there's already people down there helping protect the business. Okay. And what did you do then? Um, I I start running towards the car source lot number three to put out the fires, pausing occasionally to catch my breath and walk. Okay. On the way to car source three. Did you have any interaction with Mr. Rosenbaum? I did not. Did you speak to Mr. Rosenbaum? No. Did you notice Mr. Rosenbaum doing anything as you went down to car source three? I didn't. I didn't notice Mr. Rosenbaum until until he came out from behind the car and ambushed me. Okay, I'll get to that. Did you run the whole way? No, I didn't. Okay. You had your gun, correct? Yes. And you had a fire extinguisher? Yes. And you had your medic? My medical bag, yes. And were you asking people about medic, medic at that point? I was asking people if they needed um, medical help as I was getting down there. Did you receive any responses? No, I didn't. Describe your approach to car source number three. As I'm walking down Sheridan Road, um, I... I hear somebody scream, burn in hell, and I reply with friendly, 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 
to let them know, hey, I'm just here to help. I'm just, I don't want any problems. I just want to put out the fires if there are any. Um, I continue walking, and then I notice the Duramax. I notice a flame in the back seat of the Duramax, and I step, I step towards the Duramax, and um, as I'm stepping forward, I believe his name is now Joshua Zeminski. He steps towards me with a pistol in his hand, and as um as I'm walking, as I as I'm walking towards to put out the fire, I drop the fire extinguisher and I, I take a step back. Okay. When you step back from Mr. Zeminski, what's your plan? My plan is to get out of that situation and go back north down Sheridan Road to where um, the car source lot number two was. And did you get back? Were you able to go in a northerly direction? I, I wasn't. Describe what happens. I, once I take that step back, I look over my shoulder and Mr. Rosenbaum, Mr. Rosenbaum was now running from my right side um, and I was cornered from in front of me with Mr. Zeminski and there were <laughs> there were three people right there. Uh, 10 minutes and please don't talk about the case during the break. Read, watch, or listen to any comments. Kind of